David Gurnett, the star, is Marietta, beat Stanford, Connecticut 9-8 in the semifinals. He struck out 10 at four base hits. This double by Joe Hutchinson, a key hit, producing two runs in the fourth inning, as Marietta came from a 5-0 deficit to lead 8-5. But Stanford fought back to tie the game at 8-8. And at the bottom half of the final inning, two out, bases loaded. Alan Olmstead hit a shot off the glove of the Connecticut first baseman, and Marietta won it 9-8. to eight. The first time a Georgia team has ever played in a championship game, and the range of emotions obviously wide after the seesaw struggle. So today, from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, same-day coverage as Marietta, Georgia, meets the Dominican Republic in the 37th Little League World Series Championship game on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Anywhere in the world, it is a very special place, for it is here the Little League World Series is played. Eight teams coming to Williamsport for the tournament, four from the United States and four foreign teams. The two finalists from out of the U.S. Southern region, Marietta, Georgia, defeating Chicago 7-2 and Stamford, Connecticut 9-8 to get to the championship game. The Dominican Republic defeating Canada 8-2 and Japan 3-0 to gain the championship game. And it's a first for both Georgia and the Dominican Republic. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. Working with us today, Earl Weaver, former manager of the Baltimore Orioles, enjoying his first Little League World Series and having a good time. I've certainly enjoyed the baseball that I've seen played here, Keith, and they, these young fellas play just like professionals. Pitching can be so dominant at this age level of 11, 12, and 13, and uh, Marietta, Georgia, sends out a big six-foot right-hander named Mark Fashota today, hoping he can handle the bats of the Dominican Republic. Well, years back, Connie Mack said that pitching was 75% of the ball game. I always like to think it was 90%, and Mark Fashota is the type of player that can dominate a series such as this. Well, we had one last year. A big strapping right-hander led Kirkland Washington to victory. Cody Webster, remember, the big home run and struck out 12. But this Dominican Republic team is very efficient at field and very, very quick. Well, we watched them uh, win a no-hitter Thursday afternoon. There weren't a lot of balls hit hard, but the balls that were hit, they showed me a real fine defensive ball club. And their shortstop, Rudy Belfry, has as good an arm as I've seen on a lot of people that are a lot older than him. We'll be back with the starting lineups in just a moment. Today, that the Latin America team, the Dominican Republic, would be the home team. So as they take the field, let's meet the young men from Marietta, Georgia, representing the U.S. South. They'll introduce themselves. Adam Olmstead, third base. Mike Langley, left field. Mark Machuda, pitcher. Kenny Carlson, first base. Eric Smith, shortstop. Jeff Estes, catcher. David Grenat, right field. Joseph Hutchinson, second base. John Adkins, center field. Keith Grewal. Tommy Gilbert. Nelson Locker. John Ubertino. Brian Pear. Richard Hilton, manager. Dickie Thomas, coach. The starting pitcher for the home team from Latin America, Dominican Republic, Alfonso Cuello. He throws it a little bit from the side. It's his first appearance in the Little League World Series. He is the third pitcher used by the Dominican Republic team. A bit of an unusual thing because normally you'll see only two pitchers unless the team gets in trouble. Wilmer Batista pitched the first game. Jose Almonte had a no-hitter in the second game. Today we see Cuello and his first pitch to Adam Olmstead leading off from Marietta is high and away. And Olmstead more or less serves to, served as the catalyst last Thursday in the semifinal game when he had two bunt base hits in a walk to get rally started. Cuello gets him at one and one with a swinging strike. Adam stands in at five, almost five three, and weighs a robust 86 pounds. He's four for six in the tournament. There's the manager of the team on the right, Bure, Carlos Bure. They are allowed one coach. Pitch is foul back out of play. There's Richard Hilton, the manager of the Marietta team, plays in the East Marietta National Little League. And uh, his coach is a gentleman who played football at the University of Georgia, Dickie Thomas. Miguel Amador is doing the catching for the Dominican Republic. Whips the ball down to third base. He thought it was a strike. Frankie Rizzo, who has 
worked home plate in every single one of these Little League World Series did not get him a strike. The count goes now to three balls and two strikes. That one is foul tipped into Amador's glove. Setting the rest of the defense after one out for the Dominican Republic. Jose Almonte at first, Eddie Matos at second, Rudy Beltre at short, Wilford Felice at the third, Ramon Mateo in left, Rafael Santana in center, and Wilma Batista who pitched the opening game in right field. The batter, Mike Langley, beats it down the right side. First baseman makes the play on it. Jose Almonte, who plays first base when he isn't pitching. So you've got two outs. And for a little fellow, this Coelho at 82 pounds seems to be bringing it up to the plate pretty good. Mark Fischota, the pitcher for the team from Georgia. Stands just over six feet, swings a big bat. He's been two for four in the series, and he hit over 500 in the tournament games that they played to bring him to Williamsport. Bashota pounds it back, out of play. Stands at six, weighs 157 pounds. He is a big youngster. He's born in New York, not a native son. These are all-star teams from their respective little leagues at their home. Commodore sets up on the outside. Cuello's curveball is low and away. And Cuello's got a little, uh, pretty good curveball. Uh, he started at the center of the plate and it broke outside. It's breaking some eight inches to a foot. Oh. That's low and away. There is an umpire at every base. Steve Spano from Charlotte, North Carolina at first. Alan Costell, Clayton, New Jersey at second. Tony Tolino, Astabula, Ohio at third. Down the left field line, Ed Russell, San Bernardino, California. Down the right field side, Ruben Diaz from Sieva, Puerto Rico. Cuello's pitch is swung and fouled. Back to the backstop. And Pesota had a good hold. cut. Pesota had a very good cut at that ball. And you can't blame Cuello for being a little careful with a fellow that stands a little over six foot in Little League Baseball. If he gets that aluminum bat on it, it's going to go a long way. Miguel Amador started for the dugout, but Frankie Rizzo pointed to shoot out to first base. Well, the pitch came in. I believe it was a little low, especially with the hitter standing over six foot. It's very close to knee high. Amador, the catcher, is going to have to settle down a little bit. He's very, very hepped up. He had thrown the ball down to third base on a two-strike pitch earlier and thought that was that strike three. Pitch is in there to Ken Carlson. Kenny Carlson is a young man from Minnesota. His family, his dad, was transferred down to Georgia and never played baseball before this year. He was a hockey player. And Richard Hilton said, thank goodness we didn't have any organized hockey around Marietta or I'd never had a chance to manage this youngster. Well, believe it or not, Idolfonso Cuellar seems to be throwing two different types of breaking balls, one that could be qualified as a curveball and another one just like a little bitty slider. Ball is hit rather hard to the right side, but right at the right fielder, Wilma Batista. So Batista makes the catch to retire the side. Marietta strands the man at first base. After one half inning of play, there is no score. Came from the Dominican Republic, and you'll notice that many of the youngsters will use their mother's maiden name as they introduce themselves. Rudy Ventre, Johnny Stop. Wilmer Batista, right field. Jose Armonte, primera base. Ramon Alcide Mateo, left field. Rafael Santana, center field. Miguel Amador, catcher. Eddie Mato, segunda base. Wilfrido Feli Díaz, tercera base. Y Delfonso Cuello, pitcher. David Carrasco. Josué Aquino. Jorge Peña Moquete. Eliezer López Mercedes. Rafael Cueva. Carlos Gure, manager. Luis Peña, coach. Rudy Beltre steps in, five feet high, 76 pounds and five for seven. He's going to face a speedballer in big Mark Fischota, doing the catching Jeff Estes from Marietta. First pitch is swung on and fouled back, and I think probably Rudy decided that big guy's throwing it hard. I'm going to go take a whack at it. Well, yes, he is, and this fellow I've been very impressed with, both defensively and offensively, Rudy Beltre. And he's going right after him, but he was a little late on that pitch, Keith. 
we noted, it was a big right-hander from Kirkland, Washington that shut out the Taiwanese team a year ago, Cody Webster. So if you've got the big kid that can go out there and throw hard and keep the other bats quiet, it is a big plus because the pitcher can be totally dominant at this level. Burns it in for a strike, and it's one and two. And after three pitches, it looks to me like it's going to be tough for the players from the Dominican Republic to hit the ball to left field. A radar gun tells us the shoulder's throwing at 68 miles an hour off the mound to make the play to first baseman Kenny Carlson for the first out of the ball game for the Dominican Republic. Both teams are well schooled in fundamentals. We watched that in the semifinal playoffs, and both of them played real good defensive ball. Beltry almost got around on that. Big Mark Pichotta was off the mound in a minute, fielded it, and gave a very good throw to first base. The batter now is Wilmer Batista, who was the winning pitcher in the opening game. 5'2", 94 pounds. Stockley built the strong playing right field. Swings and fouls it at the plate. Very quickly, the defense for the Marietta, Georgia team. Joe Hutchinson at second base, Eric Smith at shortstop, Alan Olmstead at third, Mike Langley's in left, Johnny Atkins right, David Granat in right field, and as we told you, Kenny Carlson at first base, Jeff Estes doing the catching with Mark Pichotta pitching. Flying away to the backstop. One out, no score, bottom of the first inning. The championship game of the 37th Little League World Series. And neither of the first two hitters from the Dominican Republic have backed away from that big hard fastball. The 1 1 pitch from Pashota. Popped in the air, coming back on the roof out of play. Big crowd. I mean, a big crowd. The stands are full. At least as many people are out on the bank overlooking the stadium as we have inside. Weather is warm and muggy. No threat of rain at the moment. And the ball was on the corner, but apparently a little low. A little low, possibly a little bit outside. The big fella seems to be stepping right off the dirt on a 10-foot circle on the mound. He's pitching from 46 feet. Swing and a miss. And you've got two out. Throwing 68 to 70 miles an hour from 46 feet. It's moving. That particular pitch that Batista swung on and missed was clocked at 73 miles an hour. The question is, can he throw that hard all day? Well, we'll have to wait and see, but it's getting up there in a hurry. Jose Almonte comes to the plate, playing first base today. He's the young man that threw the no-hitter at Osaka, Japan, in the semifinal game. A swing and a miss for strike one. I asked Posada last night if he threw any type of breaking ball. He said he stays mostly with his fastball. Sometimes will throw a slow curve, but until you get tired, I think he's going. Until he gets tired, I think he'll stay with that fastball. <laughs> He's ahead of Almonte, two strikes. Being quite deliberate on the mound. Temperature is right around 90. That ball is fouled off to the right side. And right now in the Dominican dugout, they know they've got their work cut out for them, and they're going to try to scramble for one or two runs any way that they can get them. Carlos Dure, the manager, and the coach, Luis Pina. They come from the Laquito Fernandez Little League in Barahona, Dominican Republic. Foul back. Earl's been here a week, and he's missed nine. That hit one of the transmitters here. The manager and the coach, as you notice, stay in the dugout. The people manning the coaching boxes at the corner are players, reserves, and that pitch is fouled at the plate. So far, neither Beltry, Batista, Almonte, the first three hitters have gotten cheated. They've taken their cuts. A two-strike count with two out and nobody on. Bottom of the first inning and no score. That's a high foul ball out of play. And it doesn't look like Passat is going to have trouble throwing strikes either. He's been right down the center of that plate. He's got a lot of confidence in that pass. It's 200 feet to the outfield in Little League Baseball, and that one is hit high in the air and deep to right center, but playable. And making the catch is David Granat to end the inning. So, 
Bashota gets the Dominican Republic in order. No score after one inning of play. What about this little league? Those who have played it, it means something all of their life. Like George Brett of the Kansas City Royals. Well, I remember on my 12th birthday, we lost the game, and I walked home about three miles because I was too embarrassed to get in the car. Uh, I remember playing, I, I played on the Detroit Tigers, which uh, it was a little bit different than what my family was used to because all my brothers played on the Indians. And uh, me being the youngest of four boys and playing on the Tigers, uh, it, was, it was just something different. Uh, I started off as a catcher, ended up in right field, so I think maybe my baseball career at an early age was going downhill. And until I got in high school, I started getting better. But uh, I remember playing at Standard Stadium in El Segundo. It was the most beautiful Little League field, I think, in the whole country, probably with the exception of Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And uh, it was the only one with electric scoreboards. And uh, it was just uh, a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing Little League baseball. We move now to action at the top of the third. Folks from Georgia are happy to be here, and they want everybody to know they're here. <laughs> Their team will come to the plate now in the top of the third inning to face Idelfonso Cuello. It will be Joe Hutchinson, the second baseman, Johnny Atkins, the center fielder, and then back to the top of the order for Adam Olmstead. Well, Cuello's thrown some outstanding breaking balls already, and I'm still figuring out if one of them might be a curveball and the other one a little slider. But I had a pitcher that had an outstanding screwball whose name was Mike Cuello. So similar. The comments of Earl Weaver, former manager of the Baltimore Orioles, that pitch is fouled away to the right side. Baseball is such a, a, a part of the daily life of a youngster in the Dominican Republic. If there is indeed any kind of a sports fever there, I would have to think baseball would be the one. Well, I think they're up at 9 o'clock in the morning, probably before till 5 o'clock when the sun goes down. Good weather all year around, too. They get to play it at 365 days a year. Two balls and one strike now on Joe Hutchinson. Breaking pitch is on the inside corner. It is not often that we have seen pitchers throw the ball to the inside corner. Most of them tend to work to the outside. Well, his breaking ball seems to break so much he can throw it at the hitter and kind of chase him off the plate just a little bit. Hutchinson fouls it off his foot. Here's another look at the foul ball off of Hutchinson's leg. Struck him out. That's four strikeouts now for Quayle. One down for the center fielder, Johnny Atkins. Moving swiftly. Johnny Atkins, just a little under five feet. He weighs 81 pounds. His mama is a school teacher. Daddy works in the aircraft business. The first pitch to the plate is a slow curve for a strike. Now, Marietta, Georgia team brought a pitching machine down with him. But evidently, it didn't throw many breaking balls. Very quickly, he's out in front, two strikes. Idofonso Cuello. They've got Batista, the opening day pitcher for them, out in right field. He probably would be the man who would relieve Cuello if that pitch is fouled away, if Idofonso gets in trouble. Well, the way he's getting that curveball over, he doesn't look like he's going to give up too much. One out, Johnny Atkins at the plate, two strikes. Got a good shot of the pitcher gripping the ball. It looks like he's got him with the seams. Base hit left field between the third and short, right on the hole. Fielded quickly by Ramon Mateo, the first hit of the ball game by little Johnny Atkins, who was 0 for 6 as he stood at the plate. So that's his first hit. Yes, he did, Keith, but in the... Uh tournament games that brought him to Williamsport he did hit over 300 now we go back to the top of the order for the Marietta Georgia team Adam Olmstead the third baseman Adam struck out swinging first time he had two base hits off the bunt 
in the semifinal game against Stamford, Connecticut, fouled that one away. The base runners now with Johnny Atkins at first, and he's quick. He is not allowed to leave the bag until the pitch reaches the plate. And if he does, they'll flag him, and he's gone. There's an umpire at every base. That ball is hit to the right side for a base hit. And Atkins takes a turn at second and holds on as the throw comes across from Batista. So here's Marietta, Georgia now with back-to-back -back singles in the top of the third inning. Both breaking balls that were hit got inside to the hitter. Cuello had been keeping those breaking balls away from the Marietta hitters up to that point. Mike Langley, as the pitcher comes off the mound, walks to the sidelines to talk to his manager, Carlos Bure. The manager is not allowed in Little League Baseball to step on to the playing field. Just wanted to come out, give him a pat on the back, and settle him down. One of the things that the manager would want his young pitcher to do in this situation is to keep throwing strikes. Certainly don't dig yourself a real big hole. One out for Marietta, two men aboard, and the batter is Mike Langley. A rather feeble swing there by Mike. He looked like he wanted to check it, but it was too late. There's your base runner at second. That's Johnny Atkins. And over at first, Adam Olmstead. Swing and a miss on a breaking pitch in the dirt. And a real good breaking pitch. And a lot of professional pitchers might be proud of that curveball. Just snapped off. We'll notice that he went back to the outside part of the plate. Again, in fact, that pitch was maybe three, four inches outside. Struck him out. Two down. Here we get to see the last pitch again. The catcher sitting right on the outside half of the plate. Cuello starts it at the outside half of the plate. It breaks outside. And Mike Langley would have had trouble reaching it. Now the big pitcher, Mark Pashota. He walked his first time. He hits with power. Two out and two on and no score here in the top of the third. And Amador, the Dominican Republic catcher, will almost every time there's a check swing, ask for an appeal at first base. Well, Frank Rizzo almost called that a strike, not on a swing, but because of the position of the pitch. Up the middle it goes into center field. Here comes Johnny Atkins around third base. The throw to the plate is to the backstop. The runners move up. And Marietta, Georgia takes the lead on the single by Pashota, one to nothing. Homestead around to third, Pashota moved up to second on the throw in from center field, another Here's look the at pitch, it. pitch, the breaking ball, he had it down, but Pashota got enough of it to drive it to center field. Rafael Santano, let's go with a very high throw here. Allowed Pashota to go to second base, but the man would have been a third on him. Pitch bounces away from the catcher and breaking from third and scoring, Homestead safe at third, Pashota, wild pitch. Two nothing, Marietta. Miguel Amador kept the ball in front of him. We get to see it again. Blocked the pitch, but it bounced off to the left. There was definitely no chance to get the runner at home, but he made a heads-up play and made the play at third base very close. So with two out, Marietta now cashes in for two runs, and the hitter is Kenny Carlson. Two ball, no strike count to him. He was three for six going into this ball game in a tournament. Had Goodwood on the ball to right field last time. He's swinging at pitches outside. Two and one. Kenny's first time up. Lined the ball, hit it rather sharply, but lined it right to Batista in right field. That pitch is well outside. The show to the pitcher. Delivers the first run on a single to center. The second run came home on a wild pitch, and Marietta has taken a two to nothing lead. And Cuellar's, Cuellar's success will come from keeping the ball on the outside half of the plate. Every time he's gotten it in, it's been hit hard. That's spanked sharply foul down the right side. When you get that aluminum bat on a baseball, it will get out of here. 
Yes, they're using them in high school and college now. And in the College World Series, they hit so many home runs, so many more home runs now than they did years past when they used the wooden bat. 3-2 pitch, popped up in the air on the right side. They may have a play on it. The catcher, Amador, makes the catch to end the inning, but it's a big inning for Marietta, Georgia. As they take the lead in the ball game after two and a half, two to nothing over the Dominican Republic. Another man of prominence in Major League Baseball with Little League experience, Los Angeles Dodger Dusty Baker. Well, Little League Baseball was a time where I wasn't very, very good ball player. My dad was my coach, my manager. I thought he was uh, kind of tough on me sometimes. Um, uh, I didn't make many all-star teams, but Little League, through my dad and through these different experiences, taught me... Uh, you know, a value of life, and uh, it, it, you know, it kept me out of trouble because a lot of kids that I played with were as good or better than I was, in my opinion. But uh, just the fact that I did play something or had something to do during the summertime, and then finally fell in love with the wonderful game that kept me out of trouble and gave me the uh, good life I have now. The 1983 Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Looking at the crowd in and outside the stadium, they're estimating a record crowd of 40,000. They can't know for sure because they don't sell tickets. It's free admission. Mark Pashota, the dominant figure in the ball game so far. Georgia comes to the plate now. Marietta to the top of the fourth inning, leading in the ball game by a score of two to nothing. And Eric Smith is at the plate, the shortstop. He struck out swinging his first time up in the ball game. Ed Alfonso Cuello doing the pitching and throwing a lot of curve balls. And he has a two strike count on Eric Smith. Eric Smith looked like he handled uh, the bat real well in the games leading up to this one, but he hasn't been able to handle that curveball. The only base hit in the ball game by the Dominican Republic was a single. The base runner moved up to second base, but he was stranded there. And you saw Eric Smith swinging, striking out, which brings Jeff Estes to the plate. That's six strikeouts now for Cuello. Estes, the catcher for Marietta, Georgia, takes the ball. The Georgia team uses the clear plastic face masks. The Dominican team does not. And again, again, I think that's a very good idea, and I think it might be adopted by professional baseball in time to come. It's the top of the fourth inning, and 2 nothing. Marietta leading the Dominican Republic. It Alfonso Quayle once in a while looks like he tries to reach for a little extra and when he does he has missed the strike zone virtually every time. Burn that one in. Make it three and one. This inning he's had everything on the outside part of the plate. The pitches that he's he's gotten on the inside half of the plate have been hit hard. Oh. Rather liberal call there on the outside for a strike to make it three and two. Good curve. Struck him out. It's a moment in Williamsport for everybody, no matter your age, to have a good time. My God, she's having a good time. She's certainly enjoying herself. Not captured quite by the drama on the field. And, uh, David Grenett is the batter for Marietta. And Cuello's pitch is outside. He did just about everything that had to be done in the uh, semifinal game as he <laughs> came out. He did, didn't he? Held the opposition in relief and got four hits. Struck out ten. Ooh, wicked foul. Now that was a fastball. And I wonder if on purpose Cuello threw that pitch on the inside half of the plate to move him out so he could come back with the breaking balls on the outside. Breaking ball grounded to the shortstop Beltre. Scoops it, has a good arm, but throws it away. Error on Beltre. He looked like he had to reach for the ball a second time and just simply threw it away. He did, Keith. He got the ball caught in his glove. We get to see it one more time. Ground ball. Slightly to his right. We'll see him get it caught in his glove. He didn't get it off. There he had a 
bring it into his body to get a good grip on it. The speed of the runner might have surprised him because he certainly made a bad throw. Joe Hutchinson is at the plate and he fouls it down the third baseline. Joe struck out his first time. Johnny Atkins will be the next hitter if Hutchinson can stay alive. On the shortstop, Sarah, you have David Gurnett at first base. Breaking pitch misses outside. With the runners not being able to leave first base till the ball reaches the hitter, it allows the first baseman to play behind the runner no matter what the speed of that runner on first base. Watch Goodwin down the third base line. Pitcher comes over to throw safe. Beat it out. And even though he beat it out, Udafonso Cuello made a very, very good play on that. Something to get things started. A perfect punt down the third baseline. And how Cuello got there that quick, I don't know. He was off balance, but made a very good throw and almost threw him out. We've got another angle from our first base camera. He was off balance, his foot slipped. Barely beat it out. It was an outstanding attempt. Jose Almonte reached as far as he could. He didn't go into full stretch. And, uh, if he had been in a full stretch, he might have gotten the call his way. Johnny Atkins, who started everything back at the top of the third with a single, and scored the first run for Marietta, is at the plate. And the count, two balls and no strike. Bill Shea, a name that certainly has been associated with Little League Baseball for so many years, so active in it, so supportive for it, and had a direct hand in the construction of this facility here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Down the right field line, base hit. Atkins is on a tear. Here comes Grenat around third. Crosses the plate. The runner moving to third base is safe. So Hutchinson goes all the way around to third. Grenat scores at three. Nothing Marietta, Georgia. And so how often it happens, Johnny Atkins came in the ball game without a base hit here in Williamsport. Now is two for two and very instrumental in the three to nothing lead that Marietta, Georgia has built up. Get to see it again. Hard hit ball right down the first baseline. A strong throw from the right fielder, Batista. However, in my opinion, I thought they might have had a play at home play. Here we'll see him just get his foot on the base before he puts the tag on the shoulder. We get one more close look at it. Looks like he's going to be out, but you see the foot hit, and then the glove come down on the shoulder. Adam Olmstead comes to the plate now with one run in, swings and misses on a pitch to the inside. Over to third base, Joe Hutchinson. Up at second base, Johnny Atkins. Atkins two for two. Very important batter for Cuello right now. He can keep him in the game if he can get this man out. Olmstead singled off him his second time up. And scored the second run for Marietta. It is now three to nothing. Five hits for the Georgia team. Which is outside. Two and one. You have to wonder how long Carlos Berea is going to go with it. He's got Batista playing right field. And Batista was outstanding in the opening game. Almonte is not allowed to pitch again because the rules say you cannot pitch in consecutive games in the Little League World Series. Pitch is fouled back. And those, those are the decisions that managers have to make. Now he's being very patient here in the top of the fourth inning. Ed Alfonso has now thrown 23 pitches in this inning. And that's a lot for a fellow that weighs 82 pounds. Hutchinson at third. Atkins at second, Olmstead stays alive with a foul to the backstop, and it's 3-2. And I was more or less expecting a breaking ball there, I guess, because I've been around professional baseball, especially with first base open. Olmstead went into this ball game with four for six here in Williamsport and already has one for two today. 
A 3-2 pitch, snap back to the mound. Goyo picks it up, makes the throw across, and gets his man, and the inning is over. But Marietta, Georgia, adds another run, and after three and a half innings, lead the Dominican Republic 3 to nothing. We're at Williamsport, Pennsylvania, Little League World Series, baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn. You picked a good day, commissioner, a record crowd of 40,000, they say. I like to see it look that way. It looks beautiful to me. It's I've quite got a the, spectacle, isn't it, Commissioner? It, it is a great spectacle. It's full of the uh, the fun of the Little League operation, which I, I enjoy. This is Little League. Ought to be, it ought to be a lot of fun, and this is fun. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning now for the Dominican Republic. The butt is laid down, and the throw across is in time to get the top of the order, Wilmer Batista. Well, I've had a great week here, Commissioner. Uh, the plant that they have and the activities they have for the Little Eagles is something that I didn't realize myself. I haven't been up here since 1971 when I saw a very good team from Gary, Indiana lose in the in the World Series. And uh, I was really struck with the quality of this plant, Earl. You're right, it's a terrific plant. It's beautifully run. The Little League's a very efficient operation. The 71 would be some 12 years ago. Uh, would make the players around 23, 24, 25 years old. Are there any major leaguers? Well, uh, I think the kid team? that pitched for um, Gary that day, I think his name is McClendon. That's a little foul pop on the right side by El Monte, and Kenny Carlson can't quite get it. The last I heard, he was in the uh, Cincinnati system somewhere. I'm, I'm not immediately up to date, but he was a fine athlete. Good hit, good pitch. He was a fine athlete. You made a comment that there were, what, 400 uh, players out of the 650 in the major leagues that have little league yeah, experience. Yeah, it's right? a pretty impressive figure. It sure is. Yeah. Very impressive figure. Mark Pichota comes high with it. Boy, I've got to ask. Uh, we, it's, it's a published fact that you plan to leave your office as commissioner of baseball end of December. Have you looked into the future, or are you in a position to tell us what may lie in your future? Well, I, I have looked. Uh, I'm having a wonderful time because uh, I, I have this interim period where I bridge the gap between me and my successor. And so I have a chance to talk to a lot of people about different possibilities. And I, uh, I have made up my mind what I'm going to do. Uh, I've got all kinds of things out there I, I can do, Keith. And I can't tell you how what a, what a lot of fun it is to sit around and contemplate different <laughs> possibilities, and they're good. Three-two pitch, swung on and fouled to the right side. Let me say this as public as I can, and commend you on the great dignity at which you conducted your job as baseball commissioner. You're very kind to say it, and I, I thank you for that, Keith. Tremendous length of time. 15 years is uh, longevity in baseball. I, I enjoyed 15 years, Commissioner, and uh, we both know how tough that is. It, it is tough. 3-2 pitch hit hard to left field. Mike Langley goes back, makes the catch on the track. That's the hardest hit ball off the shoulder so far in the game. And you know, one of the arguments advanced by some of my opponents was that uh, I don't care how good Kuhn is or isn't 15 years is enough for, for anybody. And I'm not certain there isn't some merit to that argument. Well, that's why I took a hike. You've got to wear out your welcome sooner yeah, or later. I think you do. That's right. And the, ne the next thing, let me uh, recommend taking a year off from baseball because I've had a wonderful summer. Ramon Mateo is at the plate, and he takes a strike. Well, Earl, I've never seen sure. you looking better and more relaxed than you do, so it must be darn good advice you're giving. I've enjoyed it. Commissioner, thanks very much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Earl. Mateo in the ball game is tapped out to the pitcher, up for his second time. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Dominican Republic trying to come back against the Marietta, Georgia right-hander Fashota, and Mateo shoots a single to right field with two out. Well, while we were talking to Commissioner, they had their first real hit, hard hit uh, fly ball by Jose Almonte, and it's followed with a single to right field. So they have two hits in the ball game now, and uh, Rafael Santana stands up. He struck out his first time. The base hit to right field was still clocked at 72 miles an hour, so he hasn't lost any velocity. Here's Dr. Creighton Hale, who is the president of the Little League. That's foul at the plate. 
Well, there's nothing you can do against a, a, a pitcher with that kind of speed or except just go out there and wail away. Wail away, and that's what they're doing. And it seems like they're starting to catch up a little bit more the second time around the artist. That's foul. Mateo is on at first base, having single to right. This is Rafael Santana. Bishota hasn't tried anything tricky. He's just let that big, hard fastball come in. That goes in the hole the other way. And you've got two base runners on now. Back-to-back -back singles by the Dominican Republic. And it'll bring up the catcher, Miguel Amador. They literally, in both of those base hits, Mateo and Santana just put the bat on the ball. Yes, they did. Uh, they didn't get the bat out in front, but they made sure that they got a piece of it. Watching Miguel Amador throughout this tournament, He's more or less acted like a self-appointed team captain. He's been the fellow that uh, has made the appeals to the first base umpire on a half swing. Uh, he's gone out, he's told uh, the outfielders how many outs are, where he's thought that the play should go. And he's been swinging a pretty good bat. He's got an opportunity to help his team right here as Pachota comes high and tight with a fastball. Mateo at second, Santana at first, Marietta Jordan leading the Dominican Republic in the championship game of 1983 by a score of three to nothing. That pitch will come to the backstop and the runners move up in a hurry. Wild pitch. Here's the pitch. It seems like Pichota just seemed to hang on to it a little bit too long. And again, when he's throwing that hard, it's hard for Estes to shift because the ball's only coming from 46 feet away. Commodore's got him in scoring position now. Fouls it off on the right side. That makes the count two balls and one strike. Two down, two on. up high three and one so it's a bit of a rough inning here for Mark Pichotta well his control hasn't been as good in this inning as it had been, had been in the three previous innings that's foul back and he's got a full count of three and two with two up He hasn't lost anything off his fastball. He's still being clocked anywhere from 70 to 72 miles an hour. That last pitch was 71 miles an hour. Well, he's hanging in there. He got just enough of it to pop it out of the mid of Jeff Estes. I have to give the players from the Dominican uh, a little credit because when you see a big fella out there throwing that hard, you know, you could just back away from everything. On the ground to Hutchinson, the second baseman throws him out, and Pachota gets out of trouble. So, the Dominican Republic friends, two base runners in the inning. They've left a total of three so far, and after four complete innings of play, Marietta, Georgia, three, the Dominican Republic, nothing. Would you believe that young lady is wearing a sticker from the Umpires Association? Would you suggest that she has that in mind for her future? Quite a ways away. We move now to the home half of the fifth inning. The Marietta team retired in order in the top of this inning by Cueo. And now it'll be Eddie Matos, the second baseman, Wilfredo Feliz, the third baseman, and the pitcher spot, Idelfonso Cueo. If something's going on, you might see a change there. They only play six innings. In Little League competition, the pitch from Mark Pachota is low and away for ball one. Now, in the first inning, Pachota, the big right-hander, threw 16 pitches. In the second inning, only nine strike. In the third, he came back to 16. But in the fourth, when the Dominican Republic had two base hits, he had a wild pitch and 22 pitches. He threw a lot last inning, and he's wild away again to make it two and one. Well, six innings certainly uh, shouldn't be too many for a big fella like this. 
Earl Weaver, Keith Jackson here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. That one thrown to the inside corner, and Matos didn't get cheated on a swing. It's two and two. Foul back. Count hold. Well, Pichota hasn't showed us that cur slow curveball he talked about last night yet. And I don't blame him because he's having success with the fastball and he stayed right with it. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fouled away. Well, really, the last inning was the only time that he was in a pickle. And I guess he just didn't want to give anybody a chance to get all of the ball. And he doesn't figure they're going to get all of his fastball, though two of them have been hit pretty solid to right field and left field. There's the slow pitch, changed up on it, punched to right, drops for a base hit. No sooner talk about it than it happens, and it was not successful. Just over the glove of the second baseman, Joe Hutchinson. Although Mattis might have been fooled a little bit on this. He's been looking fastball all game. Little off-speed pitch. He got out on his front foot and just managed to get enough of the bat on the ball to drop it over the second baseman's head. So the leadoff man is aboard for the Dominican Republic in the home half of the fifth inning. And here is Wilfredo Feliz. And the pitch is high for ball one. That looked like a good pitch, and I think catcher Jeff Estes wanted it. Three-nothing. Marietta, Georgia team is leading. That one is low. It is the first time ever for either the state of Georgia or the Dominican Republic to be represented in the championship game. This is the 37th. There's a strike. Two and one. Well, there's certainly no reason in the world for Pichotta to be thinking about getting fancy, Earl. No, he's still got that three-run lead, but he's been successful throwing the ball hard. Back to the mound. Throw to second. They've got one. Throw down to first. Double play. And you won't see a play executed any better than that in Major League Baseball. And believe me, everybody here at the park is enjoying it. Just a one hopper back to the mound, but Pichotta took his time. Shortstop Eric Smith gave a perfect throw to first base. And it's a play that I didn't think I'd see executed here at the Little League. Very nice. A 1-6-3 double play, and you're going to get... Here's the pivot. Perfectly executed by Eric Smith. You're going to get David Carrasco coming to the plate as the pinch hitter for Idelfonso Cuello with two out. And you speculated right, Keith, and after watching Cuello swing that bat early, I think it's a good move. That means you'll have a new pitcher for the Dominican Republic in the top of the sixth inning, the final inning. And it could well be Wilmer Batista who pitched the opening game here. So Carrasco hitting 250 steps in. And Pashota misses low and away. Logical move because the Dominican ball club's running out of time. A double play. Such a friend, such a friend for a pitcher. The only better fr friend he's got is a triple play. <laughs> That's right. A 1-1 one, one count on David Carrasco, 5'3", 95-pounder. Hit him. Inside pitch, nicked him on the arm. Just above the elbow, it appears. Well, let's hope that it was on the meat part because you wouldn't want that hard fastball hitting you on any bones. Pashota comes down to apologize. Here's a look at it. Got a runner. That ball just kept tailing in. Mr. Roscoe moved, the ball moved right with him, and there was no way that he could get out of the way of it. So that is the fourth base runner for the Dominican Republic, Barahona. The city, the league, Lequito Hernandez, little league. And here is the top of the order, Rudy Beltre. 
And it's ball one. Beltre's been quiet, has stepped back to the pitcher and struck out looking. He started this ball game hitting 7-14, seven, seven, 5 for 7 here in this Williamsport series. Inside corner. And Beltre made a move back away from the plate. And the pitch hung on the corner. Two out. Carrasco at first. That pitch is away. Two and one. Just one more at bat for both teams. That's foul back. Shadow needs four outs, and each one of them will be very tough as we approach the end of the ball game. Time for a moment as Beltre takes a walk and comes back at 2 2. That's foul. The Dominican team strikes you as being very fast, but the fact that they have to stay on the bag until the pitch. That one sails to the backstop, advancing the base runner Carrasco. Until the pitch reaches home plate, it takes away foot Vir speed. Virtually eliminates the stolen base, unless they try something tricky while the catcher's got uh, the ball in his hands, and virtually eliminates the squeeze play. Yep. 3 2 pitch. Right side flag down by Ken Carlson. A look what I found catch to end the inning. That may turn out to be well, one of the big plays in this ball game. A very right big there. play. That would have had one run in and the second run in scoring position. We get to see it one more time. Pitch on the outside half of the plate hit hard. And Kenny Carlson got up just as high as he could to catch that baseball. So we've played five, one to go. Marietta, Georgia leads by a score of three to nothing. And here's another major leaguer, a great one who has had his experiences with Little League. His name, Carlton Fisk of the Chicago White Sox. The only way you could tell our Little League teams apart was by the different color hats each team wore. But I think what it did more than anything was uh, develop the camaraderie within the competitive spirit of Little League baseball. Uh, there was competitiveness, but there was also uh, the friendship that went along with growing up and playing with your peers. So uh, it probably established that competitive spirit that it took to go down the road and eventually end up here at the major leagues. We have a pitching change. Ramon Mateo comes in from left field to do the pitching in the top of the sixth inning. And his first pitch is in there for a strike to Eric Smith. Going out to play left field defensively for the Dominican Republic, David Carrasco, who had pinch hit for the starting pitcher, Cuello. And Carrasco out and left. Mateo coming in, and I'll tell you, Ramon Mateo gets it up there pretty well, doesn't he? Yes, he did. We, he played first base in the ball game that we watched Thursday, and he made an outstanding throw from first base to second base to nail a runner. Half is back to the mound. Mateo fields and throws out Eric Smith for the first out here in the top of the sixth. This is the final scheduled inning. And you can bet Richard Hilton, the manager of the Marietta Georgia Club, is telling his ball club, don't let up. Let's try to put a few more on the scoreboard. They call him Grizzly, the kids do, and he's a nice man. Jeff Estes, the catcher. The second baseman pulls it down. Eddie Matos, two down. For Little League Baseball, we watched a fine defensive ball game up to this time, Keith Keith. Indeed. David Gurnett, the right fielder. Gurnett aboard on Beltre's era and has scored one of the three Georgia runs. Low, the backstop. Ball one, a ball one. Gannett looks to be a real good hitter, especially uh, in the semifinal game when he went four for four, but he wasn't able to handle that curveball of Coelho's. Now we're back to a fastball pitcher, and we'll see what type of swing he has. One 
One more at bat for the Dominican Republic, and they're down by three runs. Fouled at the plate, and that one bit Miguel Amador. Walk, 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 walk. Frank Rizzo, who has been the home plate umpire in every single one of the 37 Little League World Championship games. Take another look at it. Seemed to be a slider that broke down. Takes it off and the count is one and one. Inside to Gannett. There the Gannett family. Traveling north to be with their son. In one of the big moments in his young life. And a little, they, we saw a little tension in their faces. Sharply struck, second baseman Matos has it. Throws over to Almonte. And the Marietta, Georgia team is turned away by Ramon Mateo in the top of the sixth inning. One more at bat for the Dominican Republic. Marietta leads three to nothing. And then, of course, you remember the Sugar Bowl matchup between the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Georgia Bulldogs, and Penn State came away with the win and the national championship. Richard Hilton, Carlos Barre, and their respective coaches, Luis Pena there with Barre and Dickie Thomas. Anxiety gripping the whole place as Marietta went down in order against Ramon Mateo, a new pitcher in the top of this inning. It's the final at bat for the Dominican Republic as Marietta, Georgia leads by a score of three to nothing. And Mark Pashota trying to turn him away here in the bottom of the six. The batter for the Dominican Republic is Wilmer Batista. And Richard Hilton. Really wants his big pitcher, Mark Pichotta, to throw strikes right now. No free passes, please. Wilmer Batista, Jose Almonte, and Ramon Mateo. What's coming your way, Joe? Ball is hit to center field. Johnny Atkins has his eye on it. Now his glove on it. One out. Ball wasn't hit badly. And really, the Dominican ball club has got a lot more aluminum on that ball yep. than I would suspect they would have, the way the way Pichotta come out throwing. And there's more tension. That's Mark Pichotta's mother living and dying with every out there is now. Jose Almonte. He hit probably the hardest ball Struck. That is off the glove of Joe Hutchinson at second base and into right field for a base hit. He had drilled one to left field the last time up. This one he guides through the right side for a base hit. That is the fifth hit for the Dominican Republic. Now Monte pitched a no-hitter in that Thursday ball game and has handled himself well at first base, along with swinging a bat very good in the tournament. Ramon Mateo started in left field, relieved as pitcher in top of the sixth inning and how the first pitch back. And I'm sure Richard Hilton in the dugout is hollering as loud as he can to his players, be sure of one. Don't get fancy, don't try to get two. Let's take one out at a time. Pashota reached for extra, got it, but he held on and kept it low, just low. Almonte on first base. Remember, he can't run. He's got to wait till the ball gets to the plate. To the shortstop, Eric Smith. Over to the second baseman, they get the lead man. And happy to get that man. That makes two men out. <laughs> and there's Hilton. One more. The kids might be excited, but I'm sure Richard Hilton is just a little more excited than all of them. I know I would be. Rafael Santana comes to the plate. Tell you the truth, Keith, I've got butterflies in my stomach right now. Hide right away, he almost threw it to the backstop. Good extension by Estes to keep a glove on it. The shadow wants to warn against trying to overthrow. That's not the tying run at the plate yet. That's foul, and it's one and one. You're seeing a lot of set jaws as these youngsters from Barahona come up there. Down the left side, 
it go into the corner off the wall. Base hit. It'll be good for two. The runner turns. El Monte coming to the plate. The throw. He scores. Back to third. He's safe. Couldn't get much more exciting now. The tying runs walking to the plate. And Miguel Amador, two out. Bottom of the sixth inning. The score is three to one. We'll see this pitch hit directly down the left field line. The runner at first is not important. Good throw into third base. A play at the plate. But his run was not important. Neither is this runner sliding into third base right now. All they have to concentrate on is getting Miguel Amador out at home plate. So Mateo comes around from first base to score and over at third base Santana and that's a foul ball sharply struck by Miguel Amador. There's the second run possibly sitting over there at third in Santana. That's foul. They're not going down easy, are they? No, they're not. It's an exciting ball game, and I just wonder how many of those seven defensive ball players behind the pitcher want this ball hit to them right now. Four is now three to one. Bottom half of the final inning. Close. Just the least bit low. One ball and two strikes. Two out. A three-one Marietta lead. Ground ball, Joe Hutchinson, second baseman, first baseman, Carlson. Marietta, Georgia wins the Little League World Championship for 1983. Mr. Hilton's a happy man. So is the whole Georgia ball club. So it is an exciting afternoon for the folks from Georgia as their first trip of the Little League World Series championship game results in a championship. Marietta, Georgia 3, Dominican Republic 1. Travel arrangements made through promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong for more top business centers with three-class Royal Pacific service. This has been an ABC Sports presentation. Just an old sweet song. Marietta are the Little League World Champions. They beat the team from the Dominican Republic 3-1 to one this afternoon. To win the World Championship, they had to be better than 2.5 million youngsters playing Little League ball in 27 countries. The game was played in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and since it was tape delayed, their fans had to listen to the action at home. <laughs> I think it's great. I mean, they went so far and they did so good. <laughs> oh, I think it's tremendous. There's a lot of pressure on the boys. Yo, but they can handle it. We're rooting them on. East Marietta is the first Little League team in Georgia to win the World Championship. The team returns tomorrow at 1.45 in the afternoon and we'll be there live at the airport. Well wishers can greet them there or at the Hilton in Cobb County where a victory celebration is being planned. Of course, John Buren will have all the highlights from the game in just a few minutes. In Wisconsin is in Pennsylvania with the East Marietta All-Stars, so John is here to tell us about our very own world champions. You mentioned the number of young men and women that, that are Zillions participating almost. in Little League Baseball. When you consider that, and the number of teams, thousands of them that start the year every year thinking, mm -hmm. oh, maybe something could happen, and this one team, regular season, playoffs, on into the pressure of the World Series, win them all. Whoa! I mean, for those of us who weren't even the best on the block when we were kids, to be the best in the world, I don't even relate to that. I mean, that's just... Gives you goosebumps. That's, that's beyond huge. I mean, that's just a titanic achievement. The Little League Baseball team from East Marietta, Georgia, today became the champions of the world. They played the team for the Dominican Republic in the finals of the 37th Little League World Series, beat them 3-1. to one. There was a crowd, a record crowd. Over 40,000 people there to see it. Top of the third inning, they saw East Marietta break on top. Mike Pashada, starting pitcher for East Marietta, singles back up the box. That scored Johnny Atkins with the game's first run. One to nothing, East Marietta, as the throw to the plate is way high. Adam Olmstead moves over to third base. That's key, because the next pitch was wild. Olmstead comes in from third base. It's two to nothing, East Marietta. They picked up another run in the top of the fourth. Pashada today had his fastball moving up there 76, 77 miles an hour, which is a heater for high school. He throws a six hitter today. The final out will move it ahead to the bottom of the sixth inning. East Marietta on top of this game, 
three to one. Olmstead into the line, kicks and deals. Ground ball over to second base. Play made cleanly. Flip at the first. That's it. Lights out. East Marietta wins the 1983 Little League World Series. Three to one was the final. We will have a complete report on today's activities in Williamsport for you this evening on Late Edition. And tomorrow afternoon, as Lynn talked about earlier in the newscast, we will be taking you live to Hartsfield International League. The East Marietta All-Stars left Hartsfield for Williamsport, Pennsylvania to take part in the Little League World Series. Today, they are about to return with the World Championship after yesterday's win over the Dominican Republic, three to one. And uh, they're letting the passengers off of this flight first. The Little League team is on there somewhere, and we assume are on their way back out in just a couple of seconds. This team began about mid-July. They went to the state tournament in Macon. They went down to Tampa, Florida. They went then to uh, Williamsport, 15 games in all, a record of 15 wins and no losses. Yesterday was the clincher, of course, as they beat the Latin American team. I think we've got uh, half of Marietta or possibly half of Georgia out here for this one today, and you pretty much expected it because it was crazy in Williamsport, and it promises to be just that way right now. I've got a few things scheduled for this team after this. They, of course, will arrive at the airport and then are uh, going to be going to the Hilton for a lunch or a dinner this afternoon uh, in their honor, and we're waiting. I think we're just about ready, so let's just watch it and we can hear the roar. Quite a roar. Okay, so we're not ready yet. In case you missed the highlights from yesterday, the game was three to one in favor of East Marietta. Mark Pichota, the 12-year-old who stands six foot two, was the winning pitcher. That was his eighth win of this tournament, eight wins and no losses. He also knocked in the first run, and uh, as it turns out, they won it three to one. It was the first Georgia team to ever represent this state, and the roar goes up. We're going to be grabbing somebody. And they're going to go, okay, let's, let's stick it right here. Let's move. You can hear it. You can see him now, the East Marietta All-Stars with their World Championship banner. Richard, real quick. With me, this is Richard Hilton, the manager of East Marietta. And Richard, how do you describe this reception? I can't say it right. Too much. Fantastic. The picture tells it all. East Marietta is home. We'll have a full report to that on Action News at 6. Reporting live from Hartsfield International, I'm Ernie Johnson. Back in Atlanta today, world champions, their friends and family and about 400 others crowded into the airport to welcome home the conquering heroes from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Here is star pitcher Mark Pichotta. I thought this maybe this would be about some parents and couple neighbors. That doesn't be like this at all. This is great. Any hugs and kisses? No. You're, not, you're not too old to do that, are you? I got one from my mom. Richard Hilton is the manager devoted around 20 years to making this dream come true. I felt a lot of kids had sweated over the years to try to get there. Some of the boys we coached years before and everything, the dreams we had, and then finally. But it, was, it wasn't just a dream for these 14 boys, it was for our entire community. Twang returned to Atlanta this afternoon, proudly carrying the Little League World Series championship banner. And as he has been all week, Harmon Wages was right there for the story. It was as expected, and especially deserved, a welcome only for champions. Today, the world champion East Marietta team, the newly crowned kings of Little League Baseball, returned to Atlanta for cheering fans, proud parents, 
and of course to hear the accolades from various Cobb County officials. We all relate to the days of Little League, and the older we get, the more we are able to appreciate just what these fine young men have accomplished. It means more to us right now because we, we can feel it a little bit more. Uh, the kids have, everything is so big and everything's so new to them right now that uh, it, nothing is really soaked in. But you know what they did. Oh, absolutely. For the players, what else can one say? It's great. Can't believe it. Yeah. I never thought it would happen. It's great. Now that it happened, what do you think about it? It's just a great experience. I'll never forget it. What about you, my friend? I'll never forget it. It's what, a good experience. What was the most meaningful part? Um, when we came in here. Then it was on to the Northwest Atlanta Hilton, who had invited the team, parents, and coaches for a special hamburger and coach celebration. Richard Hilton of 20 years. Well, yesterday upon winning the crown, I remember him shouting, we did it, mama, we did it, mama. The little boy and him rang out loud and clear. Well, I was home praying for him, clapping my hands, jumping all over the house, doing everything I knew how, to, and asking the Lord to let him win. And what happened when he won? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I was crying. I was, I was shouting for joy. I was screaming and hollering. This has been his biggest wish, you know. Yeah. Tomorrow at various high schools, activities are planned, and of course, we'll be there. Thank you, men, for the memories. Harmon Wages, 11 Alive Sports. Dan Costello reports. Hundreds of fans were at the airport to shower the team with praise and kisses. East Marietta beat the Dominican Republic 3-1 Saturday in the Little League World Championship match. The team won through hard work and concentration. I just say, don't let the crowds bother me at all. Just pitch strikes and it'll come naturally. Well, I think I've gotten a lot better in All-Stars because we practice every day. And I've been trying my hardest. And I just go all out. A police escort led the team to a party and more cheering crowds at the Hilton. The All-Stars enjoyed an all-American feast of hot dogs and hamburgers. Even in the thrill of victory, these ardent baseball fans have one wish left, that the winning streak enjoyed by the Little League will carry over to the Braves. But for now, this is enough, and the boys will savor their victory for a long time. Jan Costello, W. Champions of the Little League, champions of the world. To steal a line from Braves owner Ted Turner, America's team. And this is how they returned home to Marietta. Parents and fans 200 strong clapping, cheering, and waving bumper stickers that are bound to become pretty hot items around here. Pretty heady stuff for everyone, including the parents and fans. This is great. This is great. We got so excited yesterday afternoon watching them. It was just like big time. Yeah. <laughs> is he going to be able to get over this now? It's going to be tough to live with the child. It is going to be tough to live with Especially they had, after the game, they had all these little girls coming around. Can I have your autograph? Can I have your autograph? And oh, no. <laughs> he was loving every minute of it, though. For these All-American All-Stars, a poolside reception, complete with hamburgers and soft drinks. There was even time for a dip in the pool. And they wore their badges proudly, little metal memories of friends they met in probably the biggest events ever in their lives. For their coach, Richard Hilton, 20 years of Little League effort had just come true, even if it did get a little hairy late in the game. At that, that, that sixth inning, I was really getting scared. I probably paced my flow out. I don't know how you really do when it gets a little hairy. Does it feel good to be back? Yes, sir. It's good to be back in Marietta, Georgia. It really is. And Marietta, Georgia, is glad to have you back, too.
Rush Jameson, TV5, Eyewitness News.